Hey there, I am back home now from my travels and today I wanted to resume uh, live streaming. So I am going to cover this topic of negative track delay in Dorico because I don't think uh, everyone is familiar with how you can set up negative delay uh, in Dorico, but also, you know, what a, what a huge boon this is for MIDI composers. Certainly I have found it to be so. First, I want to explain why this is so important. So I'm going to look at, uh, take myself off the screen here and put up my, oh, there I am. Uh, let me get off me, off the screen. Okay. So let's take a look at this, this simple passage here. And so I've got this kind of spiccato, um, ostinato thing happening in my viola. And I've got a sort of melodic line happening in the violin. And the most important things to notice here is that this first note in the violin, this first, they're both happening on the downbeat. This eighth over here is happening on the downbeat of beat four. Uh, this is happening on the downbeat of beat four. We want those to line up um, sonically. Now, if you have an orchestra playing together, of course, they're going to do that, right? They're going to play really well, and it's going to be in time. When we buy advanced libraries, as advanced and expensive as they may be, the requirements of making a good sample library are such that the samples start just a little too early or just a little too late, and different articulations might be different, so the viola's natural or, um, say, sustain sample might not start as quickly on a key press as the spiccato does or something like that. That's just the way sample libraries are. There's nothing that, that can really be done about that. But when we bring those sample libraries into Dorico or Cubase or Logic or any other tool, we can take steps to line them all up again. And the good news is Dorico has really great facilities for this. But let me get back to showing you why this matters. So let's just listen to this. I'm going to play it back here. Okay, so there's, there's a little melodic line here, and it sounds all right right now, but I want to show you a different perspective on it where I simplify this melody just down to this, where we have a quarter note and a downbeat on this eighth. They're hitting at the same time, and then you've got this eighth here hitting on the downbeat of four. And the most important thing here is that these happen at the same time so that the instruments are mimicking the realistic exchange between actual players where they're listening to each other and they are making an effort to hit the same time as the other. So I'm, I've exported this and I wanted to bring it into uh, Cubase here. So you can see kind of what's happening. So this is the same audio here. And you can see that my, uh, I believe this is my spiccato viola, is happening right on the beat. And my natural uh, or sustained sample, take myself off the camera so you can see better, the natural or sustained sample right here is, not, is, is a little, happening a little early. But maybe more significantly is that even though I'm seeing signs of a waveform, it may not be until about here that that uh, sustained note really is, is you know, getting into the listener's ear where they're really paying attention to it. So sometimes you'll have a percussion instrument where, you know, the crash will be landing all the way over here and the timpani is landing over here or something like that. And it can be a real problem when you play it back, it sounds blurry and it sounds, um, well, it just sounds unprofessional and it needs to be tidied up. So that's the essence of the problem. And in Cubase, which is the DAW I'm using here, you can change that. Um, this is not specifically on Cubase, but since I'm in here, I'll just point it out. You can select a track and you can go up here and you can change what's called the delay right here, track delay in milliseconds. And then you can just basically uh, trial and error it until these are coming out at the same time. That's one way to do it. And that's how I do it in Cubase. But in Dorico, there's a really awesome uh, feature built into expression maps that I think definitely anybody who works with uh, live orchestration or uh, sampled orchestration needs to know about. So 
I'm going to show you where that is. Let's say that I wanted my uh, viola to play earlier, my spiccato uh, to play earlier. In actual fact, I'll go with a more likely scenario. The spiccato is right on the grid, but I want my uh, sustains to actually play a little earlier so that there's a little bit more cohesion. What I can do is I can go to the play mode up here, and I'm going to go into the expression map for that instrument. So I'm going to go to violin, expression map, and that's right here. Now, I'm using two different articulations in this violin. I'm using legato and I'm using natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want my natural to uh, play, I don't know, just so that you can see it, minus uh, 50 milliseconds early. And I want my legato to also play. So by saying minus 50 over here, I'm basically saying I want it to play 50 milliseconds earlier than normal. And this is an exaggeration, but it's the way that you change the settings. You go into your track, into your instrument in Dorico, you load up the expression map, you find the articulation that you're using, either natural or legato in my case here, but you might be using spiccato or staccato or something else. And you can set a negative track delay per articulation, which is extremely handy. I'll explain why in just a few minutes. Now, if we go back again, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new flow. So I'm going to duplicate this flow down here. And I'm going to export my audio from flow three, right like this. And I want individual tracks as well. Take a second for that to load up. And then I'm going to bring that into Cubase. I'm going to go to Import and Audio Files. And I'm going to come over here to Flow 3. And I'm going to, well, just include my, well, uh, yeah, the violin, I think, was the only one that I changed. So I'm going to import that. And I will hit OK. And let's just see what happens here. So what we can see now is that between the original violin and my new violin, you can see that the original one uh, started pretty much, pretty much right on the beat, a little early, but pretty much right on the beat, whereas the new one where I set a negative track delay of minus 50 milliseconds is actually playing minus 50 milliseconds. Now this small amount really does matter. Um, you know, even though this looks like a very small amount, if we were to, um, say, switch to my range tool, and we were to come over here, and I'm just going to zoom in a ton. I'm just going to say, okay, what is that range there? And you can see over here, that's 15 milliseconds. That's enough in the world of human hearing to um, feel like, well, although we won't be able to detect a, an actual echo or an actual period of time, we'll get the sense that the music's blurry, that it's not happening right on time. And so being able to make microscopic changes like that way back in the expression map and set that to, um, in this case, I would want a plus 15 so that that spiccato attack is happening right on the beat, say uh, 15 milliseconds late is what I want it to be. You can set Negative track delay is more typical, but you can set track delay to be a positive value too, so the note will actually play late. And you can see how that is affected in these audio files right here. So let me, uh, oops, I thought I was zoomed in, but I was not. So this range here, we can see, ooh, is as much as 60, but it used to be 15 was the default. I'm just doing a cursory measurement. We added 50 to that, so it's a lot more. So using these tools within Dorico, you can set a delay. And then the consequence of that is that your music is going to sound a lot tighter. If you are writing hybrid trailers and you got to hit those, duh, 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 you know, you need your timpanis and your crashes and your tycos to be right on. They got you right on the beat together. And this is how you fix that problem. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about the benefit of 
being able to do this in Dorico on a per articulation basis because in Dorico I can go into the play mode and I can go into my expression map and I can set the delay over here for my portato sample or my run sample or my spiccato staccatissimo etc. This is really important because even though you might be using all um, orchestral tools or all Spitfire or all Cine samples or something like that, per articulation quite frequently with even within the same library these delay values will be different. The samples will have been cut differently. So you want to go in and you want to look at certainly each individual instrument, even if they're within the same uh, library, and then you want to look at articulations within that instrument. A staccato uh, horn note uh, may have a, may be right on time, whereas the sustain or legato is off time. And if you have horn parts, as I do in this example, I've got string parts that are playing natural or sustain and legato, and I've also got spiccato in the viola. If those samples don't line up, it makes my music sound blurry out of time, the same as if you were to record an orchestra who didn't have a good sense of timing. And 15 milliseconds is definitely enough to make a big difference. I'd say 5 milliseconds, maybe not. More than 10 milliseconds, uh, a listener's going to really notice. And when you compound that, say, in a complex trailer uh, cue, where you've got, um, I don't know, <laughs> 30 different drums happening at the same time and they're all off by just a little bit, it's going to make that hit sound a lot less impactful. You want to fix that. And if you change it here in your expression map in Dorico, then when you export the MIDI, the MIDI will acknowledge that delay. And if you export it as audio, it will also acknowledge that delay. So when you bring it into whatever your DAW of choice is, either as audio or MIDI, then this delay will take effect and it solves that issue of making sure that all of your music is in time, doesn't sound blurry, sounds really sharp. So thanks a lot for uh, watching today. I am back home, so I'll be back on this Friday with a live stream. And if you have questions about this, please leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. And I will see you next time. All right, take care.